welcome, welcome, welcome. We're here with Megan Fox talking about her powerful new poetry book, um, which I have been devouring, Pretty Boys Are Poisonous. That's right, it brings that side out in me. And when you read this, this is this feels like a very long life lived of collected thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, would you ever consider reading one of these in the elephant? Yeah. I would, I would probably, I would rather you read it. Oh, really? Yeah. Is could... that, that won't offend you even though I've already no, done I it? No, I would love you to do it. I would love it. Okay. I've learned to look at the floor when men speak to me. I've stopped trying to share charming anecdotes over dinner because you always finish them for me. And I certainly don't dare laugh at anyone else's jokes, not even your closest friends, because we've all seen what happens when a smile creeps across my lips that you didn't put there. I put on my shortest dress and my highest heels so that you can show me off while simultaneously keeping a possessive hand around the back of my neck. My will has atrophied in my chest, my feelings stick in my throat, never forming words. I forgot that I had a voice long before you decided to become my ventriloquist. And somehow, in spite of your genuine longing to be loved, you prefer it this way. The poem is called The Art of Becoming an Accessory. I'm telling you! Thank you. It's so good. Thank it's you. so good. This book is so wonderful. I can't wait to be, I can't wait to see it be the smash success that it deserves to be. And thank you for bringing poetry back into the world because, mm -hmm. boy, I mean, that's who I was when I was a teenager. Rimbo, Baudelaire, Pablo Neruda, like, give it to me now. Yeah. Bukowski. <laughs> Bukowski all the way. Yeah. I, I got, Poetry was so vibrant and alive, and yeah. thank you for bringing the art of it back. It's so good. It's so good. Thank you. Um, I was watching like Entertainment Tonight in my hotel room, and Brian Austin Green came on, and the father of your children, and he spoke so beautifully about, you know, being engaged mm -hmm. and that you were all feeling positive and optimistic and encouraging of each other mm -hmm. and. I just thought that's the message we're supposed to give our kids. Yeah. And you work on the stuff because it's never perfect and easy. It's a long road to get there. But you figure out a way to find the gracefulness and the humor and the realness in all of it mm -hmm. in a way like it was just I liked that tone and I appreciate it and it encouraged me as a co-parent. Yeah. Who has no interest in doing anything other than talking about the function because it's there. Yeah. To, like, you know, that made me happy when I saw that. Yeah, I think it's really important when people separate to never, ever disparage the other parent or, or even in a passive-aggressive way, um, leave, make remarks, or I don't let anything in my energy like that when I'm around my kids because... If I don't accept and love their father, I'm rejecting a part of them because he's a part of who they are always. He's in their blood and he's in their psyche and they, they exist because of him. And so if I reject him, I reject them. So I've always made a point to be very loving with him and about him and very accepting of, of his, I love Sharna. I love like their baby is so cute. That's how and, I feel. Like yeah. I'm so happy. That gives your children the freedom to be happy because they don't have to carry the burden of like a war between parents. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> don't ever, ever I, I tear agree. down the other parent to your child, mm -mm. ever. There's, that isn't adult at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's incredibly childish and very, very damaging. All right, so we have to go to a quick commercial break. I, we'll be right back.